hardly taking 15 to 12 years to add a billion to the existing population. This gives tremendous pressure on housing. And there's acute shortage of houses throughout the world. My next picture is on about Manipur, because after hearing to you all, I have slightly changed my presentation, because I'll be focusing more on Manipur and problems and difficulties that are faced by the people of Manipur. Manipur is broadly divided into two regions. One is hills and one is valley. The valley lies in the middle. We are in the middle. The middle covers around 10% only. So like bamboos are grown in the hills and these hills are thickly forested, but the forest stock is depleting now because of the population, urbanization and population pressure. I was working in the field of housing and urban development for the last many years, and unfortunately, my role was limited to the urban centers as an urban planner, 27 urban centers in the state of Manipur, and most of the urban centers are located in the valley. Now, before going through my presentations, I just would like to mention you, Manipur was known as, Manipur was called Land of Jewels by Pandit Jawaharlal Nehru, former Prime Minister, the first Prime Minister of the country. We boss of many exotic landscapes, valleys, undulating hills, and water bodies. Now, why it was called Land of Jewels? My interpretation is, I think you have been here for the last few days. Did you see any beggars in the state, in the city? Did you see any landless? Did you see any houseless? So that must be the reason why Manipur was called Land of Jewels. Now, this photograph I would like to show you because this is dress code. How many of you are aware that Manipur society has a dress code? For every function, for marriage ceremonies, for any other death anniversaries or any, any functions, we have dress code. So in a function, it is very difficult to find out who are rich and who are poor. You have the same dress and dress code is followed. Similarly, even in construction of houses, the similarity is the court you will find. Most of the houses are similar in nature and character. Once upon a time, all the houses have similar design, 100%, ditto, no difference. All housing units were similar. And they were made of bamboo with mud reinforcement, mud walls. And of course, roofing was done by thatch. A residential in Manipur, a house in Manipur mainly comprises of three units. One we call it Yumjao, that is a main living unit. Second one is Sangoi, that is an outhouse. Where, because Manipur is a heavy rainfall area, during rainy days most of the activities are taking place in this outhouse. In addition to these two units, there is a third compulsory unit called Kai or storehouse, where the grains are stored, Firewoods are stored. So no residential unit is complete without these three units. So like when we talk about the Manipuri house, people normally talk about the main house, living room, living unit, and forget, tend to forget the other two units. And those are all made of bamboo at the time, and wood. And if the person is rich, he has another additional house, we call it utility house, any storehouse where livestock are reared. So this is very commonly fine, because these are all existing houses, the photographs shown by you, excepting one, all are existing. These are the outhouses, every house has a, an outhouse. So this is a typical traditional house, the living unit. All the houses are similar, I told you made of bamboo walls, accepting the veranda where the front yard, the frontal posts are of wood. The rest of the wallings are done by bamboo only. So like I told you, every house 
is I set straight unit along east west axis, and all the houses were similar. And the veranda was used for outdoor activities. And this is the living room, workplace, and everything for the unit. This must be due to the lifestyle of the people of that time, because we were all agriculturists, and there was no electricity. And we were our life, because due to the shortage of this, due to no power supply, no electricity at that time. We used to sleep at around 6.37 in the night and get up at 4, 4.30 in the morning. So the living unit is for sleeping purposes only, mostly. Cooking and sleeping only. And as I told you, we were agriculturists. The ladies, the women who were involved in heirloom and handicraft, production of heirloom and handicraft products during the daytime, so the outhouse became a very important, this veranda has become a very important unit. So like, this is a typical plan followed in every house. Like in the middle, there's a circular one in the plan, that's a fireplace. Must be the fireplace is located there because it lights the whole structure, it lights the whole rooms. Manipuri house normally comprises of three rooms and one veranda. And last one is the kitchen. And the structure is constructed along east-west axis. No construction took place along any other axis. It's always all the houses west is tilted 15 degrees towards the south by following the sun path. Because it's a very cold area, winter is very long in Manipur. This type of design allows sunlight in the morning and cut off sunlight during summers allows sunlight in winters. So like I told you, we were all agriculturists. We come to the house only for sleeping purposes. Go out in the early morning, go to the field. We used to have lunch at the veranda. Dinner, very early dinner, and sleep very early. And veranda, I told you, is a living room. We used to entertain our guests at the veranda. And we used to entertain all the headroom and handicraft activities took place in the veranda only because it's a very heavy rainfall area. This is the walling. Earlier we used to, I told you, this is a bamboo house with bamboo crates. Earlier we used to have reeds as the walling material, but due to shortage of reeds, people have started using bamboo, split, split bamboos extensively for walling materials. And the walling material, the, after the bamboo splits are placed, put in place, then we use mud plaster, mud with cow dung and rice straws mixed together and plaster it. We start plastering from inside, then this wall is plastered from outside to give a good finish. So this, is a, this one is a very common, satin is quite commonly used even now also. This is the first transformation, the impact of urbanization, impact of education, impact of the change in the occupancy. People have started enclosing their verandas. This is the first transformation, the first change that I observe. Every house which were having an open veranda started closing and use it as a living room. This is the first change. And this is the second change. And that is the end of the bamboo houses, mud houses. There are people who started extensions to the existing houses. So it's very common, these are existing houses. The first change, veranda was enclosed. The most common change is if you do not want to enclose the veranda, we have an extension, enhancement, add on to the existing building. And that is used as a living room. And I feel that that was the impact of urbanization and education and occupational change. People want a sacred room. 
where they can talk without any disturbances. So I think there's a first add-on. Then, how many of you, I mean, can you believe this is mud wall? In Manipur, you'll find very good mud walls. Now, these structures, these are existing structures, constructed of wood, bamboo walls with mud plaster, and CGIC roofing. Test gone. I told you, from that, slowly started transforming the evolution. And after that, nowadays, we don't see any thatched houses. It's very difficult to find out. With great difficulty, I could manage to take photographs of four or five houses. And this is a mud house, beautifully built, very comfortable to live in. And I told you, I was born and brought up in a bamboo house. I have felt the comfort of a bamboo house. Now, before going further, what makes the changes? Manipur lies in seismic zone 5, heavy rainfall area, and prone to flooding. Uh, flooding. Now, Government of India, the Bureau of Indian Standards, keep on changing the specifications and specifications, keep on threatening the people. In Zone 5, if you don't de do this, your building will collapse. If you don't do this, your building will do this. So like this has <coughs> banged the psyches of the public common men here. They are afraid, they felt that if I construct bamboo houses, will it affect, will it be affected by the earthquake? So someone has to say, no, no, no. See, like the effect of rain, see the bamboo. I told you there are very good mud houses, mud plastered houses on bamboo crates, bamboo walling that I showed you earlier. But this is the effect of rain. How do we avoid this? Because every, because it's a heavy rainfall area. <coughs> we have to change, we have to redo the walling on plastering. I mean, it does it cow dung. And whitewash it every season. What is the alternative? And I was thinking, is this an alternative? The ferro cement walls. But I have tried with ferro cement walls. Walls, you will not get it with ferro cement walls. See, this is the effect of flood. Many mud walls are damaged by the flood. Because of the climate change, the occurrence of flood is. It's almost every year now. So every mud, people living in mud houses or mud walls, with mud walls, they have started switching over, considering the flood. These are the houses affected by flood. Now, earthquake. I heard a nice talk about two days back on adobe buildings. All the adobe houses collapsed during the last 2016 earthquake in Imphal. The magnitude was not very high, it was around 4.5 or 4.6 only, but all those Adobe houses and houses collapsed. Now, another thing is treatment of bamboo. Bamboo treatment is resources very limited. You don't guide, find treatment places everywhere. So, like, these are the, some of the houses affected by termites, by the insects in Manipur. So like, we can solve this by treating the bamboos. So like, I would appeal the forest department to increase people can have a long-lasting structures. And flood, see like, I'll, this is a picture, I think all of you must have seen the ladies' market, very popular ladies' market in Imphal. And see the picture of ladies' market in 1892. The first one, that is of bamboo and thatch. Slowly, it was transformed to wood and CGI. And affected by every uh, rainy season, the ladies used to complain. And the last one is the existing present day ladies market. That's how the ladies market was transformed from 19, 1892 till today. Similarly, likewise, these are new houses in Manipur. 
All the houses is brick wall, CJ acid roofing, no bamboo. People have stopped using bamboo now. These are the existing houses in Manipur. When people think of constructing their houses, people think of dream of days only. Because, and these are few existing houses, recently built houses, with brick walls, CJ acid proofing. Those traditional houses are gone now. Now, like, all of you must have heard this Pradhan Mantri Awas Yojana, Housing for All Urban, of the present government. The main objective of the scheme is, when the nation completes 75 years of independence, that is by 2022, every family in the country will have a pakka house. So the government of India policy is to have a pakka house. Even in Manipur, since I was in the urban, I surveyed the existing condition of the existing houses. I invited applications through press and print and electronic media. And most of the houses we visited and found that in 26,000, around 46,000 houses are still of mud and bamboo. In the entire urban areas of Manipur, we have surveyed, and around 46,000 houses are in Manipur. And they all have applied under this Pradhan Mantri Awas Vajna, where they will be getting 150,000 rupees as grant for construction of a pakka house. In Manipur, since all the building construction materials are imported, it was not possible to have a pakka building with 1.5 lakhs plus some add-ons by the beneficiary. So people have started constructing this. These are the houses constructed at the Pradhan Mantri Awas Vasana Housing for All. So this will have a big impact on Pradhan Mantri, this scheme on the bamboo houses. So like this is about a year ago. Like uh, there was, this is a press paper cutting. The bamboo mission of Manipur, they have given in the press that large scale plantation of commercially viable bamboo spaces they'll be taking up and the Pradhan Mantri Awaz Yojana will be a boon in the development of bamboos in the country. So a pressman came and inquired whether, how many houses are going to be bamboo houses? The answer given by me was under the Pradhan Mantri Awaz Yojana, the scheme taken up by the state of Manipur is called BLC. BLC means beneficiary led construction, where the beneficiary has to choose on the type of materials that is to be used in construction of those houses built in their own plots. So it's up to the individuals to decide what type of material to go for their houses, for their shelters. What I observe is. 100%, about 15,000 houses have started constructions. Very recently I got retired and I have a WhatsApp group called Housing for All Urban 2022 where all the progresses, all the new constructions are of cement and brick only. As an urban planner, I started asking myself, what is the role of bamboos in the upcoming, in the, in the near future? I, I compare it with an urban transportation, uh, this thing, term we normally use. People who are moving with car will never travel by bus, but people with two-wheelers will definitely like to travel by air-conditioned buses. Similarly, 
In Manipur, I told you, every house has got three units. One is the living unit, one is the outhouse, one is that storage. So bamboo has still scope on the other two, where there are no grants under the, under the Pradhan Mantri Awaz was now. So bamboo has a lot of scope on the other two units, because every residential unit in Manipur is incomplete without an outhouse, without a storage house. So like the grant, the money that is available under the scheme is for the main living unit only. So friends, bamboo lovers, there's a lot of scope and we have to learn. I told you, I have come here to learn from you. I have come here to seek your advice. I have come here to listen to your suggestions. And bamboo is abundantly grown. I told you, I have tried in my septic tank, I have tried in my, my uh, this, uh, water reservoirs, and it's a success. So composite, as a composite material, bamboo has a lot of scope in Manipur. And ecotourism projects. And Manipur, I think, oplate, because a few years back, due to law and order problem, people were not thinking in terms of tourism. But now people have started constructing resorts and ecotourism projects. I told you, I'm from a bamboo family. My father was in the forest service. My, I have got only one son, he is also an architect, and he is doing some work on bamboo ecotourism project. So, I, so like ecotourism, outhouses, utility units, these are the units. So like, this is a picture. My last picture is a government officer. There's a solid waste treatment plant at Lamdeng, about seven, eight kilometers from here. It's 88 acres of land where all the waste of Manipur are transferred and treated. This was taken up during my time. And we, my, we our bosses tried, because this, in order to control smell and the, this thing, we wanted to have a thick vegetation around the compost plant. It's 88 acres of land, big area. Compost plant, it was around five acres one day. So we had around 83 acres left. So my bosses tried with plantations during Banamahama Sobas. Trees were not growing that fast, though it is three, four years old. So I started planting bamboos there. This was the picture taken just before my retirement. Plantation of bamboos in that plant. There is 88 acres. They are still following it, continuing it. So friends, I have done my bit, I felt. Thank you.
type of thing. Yes. Hello? 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 Testing? I got it. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And a very good morning for, to everyone, participants, uh, delegates. Uh, my name is Avery Chua. And uh, today I'm here to entertain you. I hope I can do that. Well, as you see, I have a long title there, The Emergence of Bamboo Building Material in the 21st Century. So what I'm trying to do here is to show you what can be done with bamboo. Uh, some of the examples that has already been uh, uh, established and has already been implemented. And when I say I'm trying to entertain you, uh, I, for sure, uh, this will not be a three-hour Hindi movie. <laughs> and I will not be dancing and singing as well. <laughs> All right, let's go. This is a world, uh, Shanghai World Expo. It's a venue that uh, located in Shanghai. It's called Ho Tang. That means a uh, a lake, but actually it's actually more of a river. This is by the Bank of Shanghai. It's built in uh, 2010 with around uh, three kilometers of walkway, and this is using fourth generation bamboo material that is suitable for exterior use. This platform, the staircase, the walkway, these are all made from bamboo. As you can see, the walkway. This, again, the other side. Oh, oh. What happened? Yep. So, in 2006, we first uh, launched a new product using bamboo for exterior. And up till today, there's already a hundred million square feet of this material installed worldwide. The next project, this is a project in Chengdu, Sichuan, built in 2011 by the architect uh, Mr. Liu Jiangkun. And this is a tourist attraction. You see the roof, the roof, the beams, and then the pagoda. You see that pagoda? All the railings, uh, the sh these are what do you call uh, blanks or sh shading. These are all made from the same material. Oop, oop, oops. It's going too fast. All right, the roofing. So this is done with a glass panel at the bottom and with facade of, uh, of what you call slag of uh, bamboo material. Next project, this is done in Banana Island, Doha. And of course, what I'm showing you here is the material is being used in different, various different environments. Hot, humid, hot, dry, different climates. And this is done by uh, Mr. Dan Bepp in 2012. Roughly, there's about 200,000 square feet of bamboo material being installed in this project. That's the part around the swimming pool. Outside, another view. Different section of the area. Oh, again. Ah. It's going too fast. Okay, here from the same hotel chain, they are using the same bamboo material for the different environment. Like this one, this is in Thailand, in Oma, in Vietnam, in Maldives. Come 2014, 
This is a venue for the Youth Olympic in China. And this is a full sport complex that's like 300,000 square feet of exterior material installed. Night and day. That's the platform. Each of these uh, walkways or boardwalk is roughly 30 feet wide. That's like 10 meters. That's a different scene. Again, um, more or less is a three kilometer walkway. You use the same material to make benches, furniture. All right. And a very interesting thing is part of this walkway actually submerged in water about a few, about a few weeks every year just because water tight goes up and down. And this picture is taken at four years after the installation. <coughs> and now the same way we are trying to uh, introduce into US, uh, this is a project done in 2012 by an architect, Julia Martins. Uh, this is a project with a row of townhouse, six unit, where the rooftop is using our material for the siding. And by the way, the tiles you see here, these are IPE. And in comparison, same installation, same, same time of installation, IPE has already started to show graying out effect where the bamboo has still quite a neutral color. Oh, oh, I, I don't know what happened here. I press one, it goes three slides. <laughs> All right. Maybe because we need to move faster. Okay, next one, Novartis. This is again a pharmaceutical company in, uh, uh, from northern uh, Europe with a campus in Shanghai. And the concept of this architecture is that using exterior material, bamboo extreme material, as a uh, railing and also as uh, shading. This part, all this part, are installed with a mechanism that it can move throughout the day, so you can adjust it. Like here, it's straight. Over here, you can see it's jutting out just like our eye, eyelash. Next, a fairly recent project. This is the uh, Hong Kong Zhuhai Macau Bridge. Uh, the bridge is roughly 55 kilometer long. Well, uh, fortunately or unfortunately, it's not fully installed with bamboo because you need, it, it's a road. <laughs> uh, cars is traveling on top. But uh, between, uh, between the, the bridge, there is two island built or artificial, artificial island built. And then there's a tunnel. And this is the island. And on the island, it's treated as a tourist attraction. And there's walkway, uh, railings, stalls. Again, those are all made with bamboo. Next, this again also fairly. This was only last year what we did in the US. A, and this material is a fifth generation bamboo material. As you can see now, the color has changed from the dark to a fairly neutral color. This is our fifth generation material. And this is done on a uh, police station in Nashville. A total of 23,000 square feet, roughly 2,300 square meter. So, all the similarity of all these projects is they are all bamboo, but they are not. You don't see it. You don't see bamboo as its natural form. Uh, this is something that I just um, I've seen now that there's a lot of bamboo lover who uses bamboo as a building material. But probably we are more onto the commercial side where we're using the material as just a material without giving it an undertone of this is bamboo. We're not trying to distance ourselves from bamboo, but neither are we just saying, oh, uh, it has to be bamboo. So key here is bamboo is a building block, a building material. Now we move on to the interior. On this interior, this is a project done much earlier in 2005. 
Uh, and well, it's the biggest uh, project in terms of space. There's about uh, 230,000 square meter, not feet. In feet, it will be like 2.3 million square feet, roughly, in, in Spain. And the unique product, the unique feature of this material is that with bamboo is that it's flexible. It's thin, it's flexible. Different view. And of course, this project won a lot of uh, architecture uh, prizes and award. Oops, again. All right, next, this is a project, a grand theater on the Opera House. Uh, up till today, I believe there's more, there are roughly about 20 Opera House built with fully 100% bamboo material, meaning even this auditorium can be made with bamboo, 100%. All right, uh, more than 20 where anything that is in those, in the auditorium or in the building, that is using wood can be replaced with bamboo. And of course, uh, also the surrounding area of the bamboo with a walkway around the lake, those are all made with building, uh, bamboo building material. Over here is the wall, is the ceiling, is the chair, is the theater. This is the entrance hall. Next, Shandong Grand Theater, and this is designed by Paul Andrew. Uh, Mr. Paul Andrew had just passed away last year, and this is one of the projects he done, design. Oh, again, I don't know what happened here. All right. No, I press one and it just skip. <laughs> uh, all right, on here, the material here, if you see, is a pieces of facade, and those facade actually had only used uh, bamboo veneer, 0.6% uh, mm bamboo veneer on aluminium casing. That's another view. That's the theater, the whole seating. Next, in 2009, this is uh, designed by Stephen Ho. This is Venkis headquarters in Shenzhen. Uh, well, Venkis is the world's biggest property developer. Uh, I guess the way I know it is Venkis is the biggest property developer in China. And if you are the biggest property developer in China with 1.4 million population, it's come naturally that you are the biggest property developer in the world. Again, the whole design and the unit do not use a single piece of wood. The whole furniture, the ceiling, divider, the shading, all that is done with bamboo. So this can go on and on, and I don't want to bore you with the same thing. That's why I'm saying I'm trying to entertain you. So. Next, we move on to furniture. This one is Microsoft Campus. Again, the big corporation, they, they, uh, they need to start working on uh, conservation and sustainability. So this part is all the furniture here is built with bamboo material. And we need to specifically design for this because usually the countertop or uh, if you use, the easy way is take a piece of particle board, slap up with some bamboo veneer, and you have a platform, you have a tabletop. But because the, the designer want a 100% bamboo material, so we cannot use particle board. So we start to design a structure using bamboo core. And with a bamboo solid piece, usually uh, the strength is like, it's better than particle board but it's still not good enough in terms of sagging, meaning if you put a piece of uh, heavy weight on a, on a table, the next morning when you come back, you want, and when you lift up the weight, you want the, your dust to bounce back. And with that, we design a structure where we call bamboo honeycomb 
in it. So the material is light. So frankly, bamboo can be made into different ways to meet different function. Cabinets. Oh, again. And then next, I move on to elements. And in the element category, basically, it's like veneer, uh, it's panels, it's, it's countertops, shelving. These are the material that we make with slice, slicing out from bamboo. That's just part of the uh, machines with presses. And in this BMW, bamboo is used over here on the dashboard. You know, the olden days you see a lot of uh, maybe maple with burr used, but on this series X5 and X6, they use it specifically just bamboo. Another view, this is a Toyota showroom, uh, kitchen, cabinet, and the last group of material that we made is what we call innovation. And this is a specific project building a hundred sets of wind turbine blade. And this is a brainchild of Professor Dr. Jim Plates. Then now in the inner Mongolia, turning a hundred sets of bamboo wind turbines. That's how we make that wind turbines with the bamboo skeleton and then we inject on the surface with different uh, resin or plastic. That's when we are testing it. Installation. So why? The question then, why is the importance of getting bamboo material in, you know, as a building material? Uh, Few of the reasons I show you is one, bamboo is not just a poor man's lumber. You, it doesn't mean that it has to look cheap. And frankly, bamboo is not cheap because the cheapest wood in the world is pine. It range, the price range about 400, 450 uh, cubic dollar a cubic. Uh, bamboo prices is more or less around 1,500 to 2,000 or 2,500 is in the range of oak. And in the case of exterior grade, it's really more towards the 2,005 uh, as in the grade of Ipe or Chenga or Iroko. So it's a high grade wood. And why do we want to encourage the usage of bamboo? because of this, right? And again, I'm not saying because we, if you use wood, then this is definitely the outcome. Everything needs to be managed. But as an alternative, because wood, uh, bamboo grow faster, so it will serve as a good building material. And towards, to most of the engineer and architect, your choice of material affect the outcome. And if it's not done properly, this is the outcome. Same case with concrete. If the concrete is not properly used and planned, because concrete is supposed to be used for a long period of time, and it's not used properly, then you have a lot of waste. Same case with plastic. I know plastic is, it comes to a point I believe it's very difficult for us to distance ourselves from plastic. But maybe it's best to use plastic for a a longer lifespan rather than just a disposable item. So what I'm showing here is there's many faces of bamboo and bamboo has the outer appearance where you love or you can also have the inner properties. So which part of the bamboo that you're using? Are you using it for the appearance which could be like this, right? The green bamboo poles bamboo mat or join up in different color or you split it and you get a different di geometry look or you cross cut it or you slant, slanting and cross cut it to get a yet another look 
So it's really up to your imagination. And in terms of properties, it's the most important element on our inner properties for bamboo would be their strength. That is modulus of rapture, modulus of elastic, its density, light. Like days, two days ago, I was looking at the store downstairs and I saw some bamboo material that's really very light. It's something like 400 kilogram a cubic. Whereas normal, most of bamboo that we're working on is something around 650 or 680. And bamboo has a good uh, property as a building material or building block because if you look from this chart, this is bamboo. There's different species of wood that's beech, birch. So in comparison, in terms of density and strength, bamboo is actually very high on the scale. And in terms of energy consumed to produce a kilogram of bamboo is the least. And bamboo I classify here within the group of wood. It's definitely less, very much less than steel, if you look. Aluminium, iron, glass, all of that building material is less. So then the question and where I keep getting from these few days in this uh, workshop is how do you get it? How do you supply it? How do we make this building material? And I say, I believe in China case is because of these two guys. It's Xing Huangdi, which is the emperor that unites China. It is Mao Zedong who reunites China again. But frankly, they represent what I call standardization and industrialization. Xing Huangdi is the standardization because when he unites China, he unifies all the measuring units. Without a single measuring unit, it's very difficult for a group of people to work together. And I see many people can get there to make what we make by looking into these two parts of the equation. That is standardization. Because I would believe it's difficult to have quickly just to put on a big factory here and then start to produce the material through one single factory. I believe it's more logical that you end up with maybe 50 or maybe 100 small factory, but then each of these small factory have to collaborate with, to come up with a single standard system. Then you are able to supply this material through a single source, a single channel, or else it's too chaotic. And then the next step is there has to be a certain level of industrialization. Uh, the manufacturing of bamboo cannot continue in the form of primitive uh, innovation that you just depend on just one hornbill matchet to cut, to harvest, and to shape the bamboo. Because that's not efficient. Throughout our history in on producing bamboo material, we came from the hornbill method as well. And then step two, we start to try a different way of approach, trying to reduce wastage, increase yield. Then came the sawing the stick, this part. But then sawing, you lose a lot of fiber. Then come the next step, the splitting. So we evolved from a hornbill with maybe a, a 500 workers just splitting bamboo to using saw to using a single machine, then reduce labor. Oops. So the first generation of bamboo, this way back in 1992, is just a simple form of making sticks. When you make sticks, then you can arrange the stick to make different material. So stick is the basic form of building material. Over here, you have a horizontal look. This is a vertical look. And then next, you start to play with colors, neutral color, carbonized color. 
And then come the next generation again because you need to increase yield. Uh, in this second generation improvement is then we take the stick or even if we don't no longer make it into stick like this, you just split it, you take the skin it and then you crumb you know you, you crumble it up and make strength. And this will give you a higher yield. Material is then formed into beams or into panels. Then come the third generation bamboo, where we no longer make into stick, but rather we just make a slit, okay? Then flatten the bamboo or unfurl the bamboo. And, and even further, we leave the skin on. So the skin is no longer removed. Why? Skin is the hardest part on the bamboo clump. And as a flooring material, you want it to be hard. So why remove it? So we keep that, we keep that skin, which contains huge or high level of silica. And the good thing with this kind of structure is uh, you can do a Janka hardness test. And the real fact is bamboo surface will not dent because it bounces back. This is just another view of the material. Close up. Okay, this, this one is the same material but the skin. Then we move on to have fourth generation material which is the material that I show you or those pro for all those projects for exterior bamboo. And this technology what we did is we extract out all the sugar and starch from bamboo. So traditionally in a wood based industry in order to preserve wood, you add in chemicals. So you add in ACQ or you add in CCA. Those are uh, kind of um, toxic that will preserve wood. Uh, in our case, because we need to keep our material bamboo as green and as a uh, positive green material, so instead of adding in chemical, we extract out the nutrients. So it's a negative effect. Uh, and then in those uh, cavity, then we inject in phenolic resin. Uh, that's about 10% or roughly 10% of that phenolic resin to coat the surface and to bind the material together. From there, recently, then we came out with the fifth generation of bamboo material, which instead of extracting out the nutrients here, we put in ceramic particle. It's the same old particle, clay, mud, that you make ceramic bowl, but in a nanoparticle form, so that it will be able to penetrate into the cell. And by doing so, we crystallize all the nutrients, including the cell wall. Are you entertained? <laughs> Maybe. So, anyway. That is my presentation today, and thank you very much. Thank you, Master. We have seen in our earlier presentation the basic structures or basic housing structures of Malaysia. And in Shua's presentation, we have found out that where we are going by 2050 or 2030, something like that third generation, fourth generation use of the bamboo. Uh, his uh, presentation basically which was for the exterior materials is most very much important thing to tell us about this. Oh, there is a good big announcement. All slide presentations will be available for free download on WBO website. You have the website by 1st of March it will be available. So by using the exterior material, because I have worked in the Reliance and I have used a lot of material for the exterior purpose. That time of course long back ago in the 2000, we were not able to get any bamboo material which I was trying to get 
but we have uh, you know we have to rely on the wood material which was with the preservations. But now there is a solution. So my next generation guys who are coming up with this, they can use this material. It may be faster, but uh, uh, this can be used. That is the uh, the solution. There is a solution for this. And while Dasso can do it, of course there are several companies also may be doing it. But those type of the companies should come up faster. I thank Mr. Shah. Thank you. Bamboo journey of uh, one vibrant person from Mexico, Mr. Marcher, Martin Marcher. Good morning, how are you? Buenos dias. Please, the team, all the team of Mexico and Peru, come here, please. Come on the team of oh, hand, please. Come, come, come quickly. Come, 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 come quickly. And the team, and the team ball. Please, we, we need for your company, so we need people. We need the people of knowledge, we need people for hands, we need people. So this is the team of Mexico and Peru. Please, class, please. Lorenzo, Isamática, Peru, Eduardo, Communication, Arquitect, Vanessa, Ana, Venezuela, Guillermo, 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 And thank you, Michelle. Thank you, uh, WBO, for be part of your team. And thank you. So we start because in the safety structures working. We have uh, we work for Coca-Cola company. We have we are in the construction industry, no? And we start with the safety structures in the in the beginning because we need to look for efficient structure. Now we need to look for the systems for get. How is the process for mega structure very easy, more with less material? So we start working with this kind of structures. So with thick bamboo, you can make a structure very easy with less material, more heat, more light. Normally, we, when we are working with bamboo or concrete, the people say, uh, I need to work with concrete because it's more secure. But this, the security is heavy. And we say, no, it's, we have a material more light, it's better for you. If we have an earthquake, the bamboo is very flexible, so we need to wall and think with this kind of material. Now we start with these words. We make this pavilion. And we start, for example, with this kind of structure is with six bamboos. I'm sorry, I don't know. For example, with six bamboos, you can make 
a very big structure with cables and tension, the integrity of tension, with six that we can make a little construction. No? So we are looking for the system and be better and develop more efficient system for construction of bamboo. No? This construction we made in Oaxaca for Coca-Cola Company. We are working with Coca-Cola Company 25 years, well my father. And Coca-Cola wants to put in the industry now bamboo. So bamboo for landscaping, bamboo for the principal access. So we are working with Coca-Cola and we won this the last year the one of the principal well I, I, I'm sorry for my English, I'm a little nervous. But well, this is for Coca-Cola in Mojave. And we put the slab with leads in bamboo because normally in the construction we have bamboo waste, so we can use the bamboo waste for little things like this. And this is the access. And we have a cooperative of bamboo. In bamboo we have 500 people in the cooperative. The name is Bamboo Cooperative Gold, Gold Green Cooperative, bamboo. And when we are well, two sandwiches in the inauguration in this moment, too. And we made some structure for the for make training for the people, for show how to how to use the bamboo. So this is one of the first construction that we made. And geodesic frames, no reciprocal frames, geodesics. So we try to make a, a different systems. And after we made this construction for a restaurant in the cooperative inside with a parabolic frame, we have one now in the hotel in front, in, you can see after. And in the Mistake, we have another project with the women working with the with, with training and show the air and show bamboo and how to make the houses for them. And we made this workshop one year ago. One year ago. And we make this TP, for example, with plastic, check. So we try to be, to make construction for the people. So we have a people with artisans can help us with the, this kind of construction. This is for one client with the curves. So we, we, you, we use steel for top. <sighs> okay. So, for a little we made this bicycle of bamboo and after we made this construction with textile and one plastic inside for show the bamboo in the parts and we use this kind of construction it's very easy to install it's with PVC you can go, you have the joint with PVC and bamboo and this is a, a roof garden you see and after one client say, okay, I want to make a structure for gather the water, I need for the can, I need one structure for all the water recollect. So we made this structure inside and with the drum, you can see the, the frame. And we put the plastic after. And well, we start with George Stan making some workshops for construction because it's very important to show and share knowledge about different systems of construction and, and, and joints. So this is the result of the of workshop of Jordi Stan. And after we put the floor with wood, like this, and we paint. And this is a corrugated sheet in, of steel. And after we take over one, we made one workshop two years ago with Jet Long, and we made this guy of weaving the structure with bamboo, and with bamboo shingles, and with air, and with Peter, we try to show, with that, like architect, we need to show the different possibilities of bamboo with frames, with design, and it's not like the, the square, and we need to know the lines, no, we can make curves, we can make, and with steel, this is more expensive, no, we need to, we need to check another opportunity with the material. And this is in San Miguel de Allende with Peter in Guanajuato. The triangle, the, the structure, and carriage inside, up in the top. And after we, we have this project, it's a bamboo house in the Popocatépetl. So the client, normally all the people is change, changing the conscience about construction, about 
be more vegetarian in consumption, no more concrete, no more steel. Okay, and well, we use less steel, less concrete, and more bamboo. Okay, so this construction is with only bamboo. The floor too, we use some laminate of bamboo. It's not, la it's not, it's very rural laminate, but we use it. And the stair and bamboo. And with the waste of bamboo, we, do, we use for the little walls, no? Because we can have, okay, what can I do with all the waste of bamboo? So we, we make this wall, the roof garden in the access, and we have the, the house, okay? And you don't, and, but inside you can see all the bamboo. We protect the bamboo for water, so we put these panels. And after one friend say, okay, I want this construction, for my roof garden, and he said, oh, I like the bamboo. And I said, okay, I want my house of bamboo too. But with a modern construction, I don't want the plastic to, to, how do you say, to, to water. To water. <laughs> so what he will is like a contemporary construction, so we make this, this house, the columns, the bamboo, we showed yesterday how, okay, how to open the bamboo, no? So, with this process, the scaffoldings, the finish the house, and inside, and the house, no? After we made this in the center of Puebla, it's three, you see a three blocks of the principal shop of Puebla. It's in the historic center of Puebla, this construction. It's like in a in the, in the room, on, on roof, so everybody can see the construction in the principal avenue. So we make this construction with the columns, after the, the, the cover, and with this, no? Uh, 500 people, we need to help, we, need, we have a room, we have people, we have tools. Okay, we need to make something, no? And we made this construction with it for the people of earthquake. So we, we made this model. It's very easy to to use. It's not we really, is the joints are very easy with bamboo. So we train the people of the of, of Pilcaya in the place. And after in Tapachula and Chiapas we made this construction with Lucila, it's an architect too, with adobe and bamboo. With, this, with these people in one week, the construction needs to be quickly, fast. And we made this construction at here with the team and the house. Okay, this was a, one solution in, in, in Tapachula and Chiapas. And after we are working now with Bambu Laminate, this was a workshop in, in Veracruz. Like the same language, oh my god. Okay, so it's the same process of the other structure we have in the outside, in the field. So the structure, the principal, and we and we can make better designs with more co with more curves, more organic. And this was the pavilion for the World Bamboo Congress in Mexico, with the steel, bamboo splits, and we have it. Huh? So we need to develop different systems for make more easy the construction, more efficient, and have a good quality of material. No? This was from Peru. Lorenzo and Marisa will explain after the, pro the project that they have in the Amazon Yoga Center. And for this, I want to show only with bamboo you can make organic frames. This was only for forest splits, for bamboo splits. And it's very strong. You can see you have five people, seven people on top, only with four splits, only for show that you can make different kinds of frames, organics, with less material. And this project was with Peter in Guanajuato. This construction is 16 for 30 meters. So in the construction, you need to, to know all the steps. Step one, we need to go for bamboo. Step two, we need to make the training. So the steps is very important because in the beginning, when you are working with bamboo, if you don't have all the steps, you can have problems in the construction. 
If you have, for example, bamboo very young, and you put, I don't know, a, a very heavy this part of the construction can break. So you need to go to select the bamboo, you need to go to, to, to cut the bamboo, you need to make the threader, and you need to be in all the steps of bamboo. Because in the beginning, for example, you say, OK, I need five cones, OK? And the five cones, three, is very young. And two is uh, more or less. So it's very important to have all the steps and steps in every every single pass. No? So first the selection, we, we go to the camp, we need to go to the field, select the bamboo, and after cut the bamboo, and after cut the knee. <laughs> but this happened, this is all the days happening in the in the field. When you are working this path, no? So we need to take care with the tool, we need to take care with the bamboo. And how to cut now? After we make the molds in, in the floor with the steel, you see the, you see the river in the arch. We have a river. Okay, it's like a mold, a big mold in the floor. After we make the curves and we leave the curves in the place. After we put the arches in on, on top. We fix, we put all the cones in the other direction, and we make this bamboo split on floor, and after we put on top. Very easy, very easy process. And we have this kind of inside. No? Sorry. Okay, this is the structure inside that with the plastic and finish. The, the roof, you can see the cover, and the finish, no? How do you finish? But the question, the, the, the important thing is that we have the, the structural system. We need to think in, in a good system for the construction, for more easy, less material, less time. And this is another photo inside. Another photo one month ago. And this with this is the project that we have and we need to try working with DASO in this case of construction for floor and for the roof. This is at the tempo and we are working now for Cancun. It's three thousand square meters. This is only one construction because it's a lot of different construction. This is like the principal with bamboo cones complete. And this is the project that we are working now in Tulum. It's Scan, the name is Scan that you can see in Facebook. It's Scan Tulum Industries. We are working now for this project. And I will show you the, the design. We have the, the houses, the departments, the lobby, the inside. And this is the name of the person if you want to call. Hey, I want a, a department, please. <laughs> I want to, please. <laughs> and one and this is, no? With bamboo all inside. This is the, oh my god. One moment. OK, you see. So we have in Mexico Huracan, very, very strong Huracan. So we need to think in the construction. OK, if I have a lot of air, I need a construction with the direction of air. I put all in the different parts. So this is the design of Globy. OK? So we are working now on this project. We have the bamboo now with the treatment and cutting. <coughs> and the lobby, no? This is how we show to the client the project, no? All the measures. And this is for cenote. We have a cenote in Mexico. We have like a lake in, the, in a cave. So we, you, we are making this construction for a one cenote in Mexico, like the like this frame, but well, with another cover. And in, for the World Bamboo Wars of India, well, the step of the process of this construction, because we have short time for make two constructions, so this is the step one. Oh my god, no 
what's the fun? Okay, okay, someone. Okay, so we made the principal structure in the middle. We put in the with the with the, the rocks on top. After we make the rings, the bamboo laminate, and after only we put, we, we put triangles with the bamboo splits, like a scaffolding. You know, when you have a scaffolding, you put one and one, and after you put the triangles, and you have more a body, like a yeah, like a body, like a so three dimension exactly. And after you only put all the bamboo up. For the second, if this is in the bamboo, in the hotel in fan, this construction, we made the curves with the same system like Mexico. We put them all, we make the arches, we put three arches, and we put the hyperbolic frame in the center, and the box of foundation with bamboo splits. And now we are working now with the, all the bamboo in the curves, on the curves. And we need to finish now with you, okay? And thank you very much. This is the company. by school children on the ground floor has started at 10 a.m. and will continue till 12 noon. We have a global bamboo shoot cuisines to be cooked by the delegates from 3 p.m. to 4 p.m. at Hapta Kamjegun, the adjacent ground, and bamboo shoot cookies demonstration from 2 to 3 p.m. at the same ground. May we request the Nagalu delegates to kindly report at the reception counter on the ground floor. Uh, one announcement. Uh, now they have the tea break, and this, uh, the speakers and all, uh, like before, at the left side and the public in the first floor. And second thing, uh, after tea break, they have the combined discussion hour from this session, second session. So all the speakers will have to come back in here and in minute 12, 30 to 1, there will be a discussion all for both the sessions. So we have, we have now tea break, I think. Yeah. Uh, we'll have now tea break and we'll come back after 15 minutes for the next session. Um. Thank you. 